Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Havana at the Lawford Theater, which is 100 years old this year. Now, it might make you sad that they're not showing movies at the Lawford anymore, but when you hear what they are doing, it might cheer you up a little bit. The River City Country Opera is here on the day that I'm here. They're here once a month. And there's other acts as well. Greg McCarthy, the Lawford Theater, and, and a lot of theaters, um, they're not for movies anymore, are they? I mean, that whole that's kind of changed, hasn't it? Not in small towns. They've uh, going to more things like we're doing now. It'd be um, live theater, um, concerts, things like that. Yeah, it's 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 tough, and we're going to talk about this as we go through the program. But movies these days, I mean, they come they come digitally, and if you don't have a digital projector, you're kind of out of luck, aren't you? That's right. Yeah, it costs a lot of money. Doesn't it? Lots of money. Like what? Yes, Ah, sweet, 50 and 60, 75,000. For a new projector. For a new, It yeah. puts somebody like the Lawford Theater, it, it, it takes you out of the movie business, right? Right, yeah, yeah. If there's just not, the, there's not the, 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 the people here to support that kind of money. Yeah, interestingly, we're here in 2014, which is the 100th anniversary of this theater. That makes yes, this a pretty is. old place, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really old. Um, the, in 2014, I don't even know if they were distributing films, new movies. Yeah. yeah. So this was probably built for something else. What do you think it was yep. built for? I think it was built for live theater. That's what they had here then. Mm -hmm. You know, it changed shortly after that, maybe 10 years after that. Mm -hmm. Maybe some vaudeville acts might come through, something like that. Right, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. uh, or maybe some local, uh, some local acts might yes. want to do it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we stand here in the front, this would have been, of course, the entryway. Mm -hmm. And you got your concession stand, and everybody's got to make a little money, right? Yep. When, when you're here for the uh, River City uh, Country Opry, which we're going we're gonna to meet some of those folks who are in that band tonight, mm -hmm. what sort of things sell? What, what, what sort popcorn's of, the big seller. Is that right? That's, that's what supports oh, the theater. Sure, of course, <laughs> popcorn. Yeah. And you got an older group, don't you? Yes, we do. So yeah. the popcorn, they probably try to stay away from the sweets a little bit. Yeah. They go for the popcorn. Not so much sweets, but the popcorn. Of course, you can make a lot of money on popcorn. Popcorn's yep. a, a, it's a good item, isn't yep. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, popcorn truly is what supports the theater. I'll be darned. That's, that's good to know. <laughs> We're going to take a tour of the theater, and you're going to show us not only the house, mm -hmm. but the backstage, and we'll get a chance to see what it was like when it was built and what it's used for now. And then what's really in interesting is if we're going to go up to the projection room mm -hmm. um, and show how movies used to be shown a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to get a chance to meet the band and listen to some music. So if it's okay with you, those are restrooms over that yes. way. There's, a, there's also a janitor's closet over yep. there. Concessions are over here. Uh, the projection room is upstairs. Mm -hmm. Let's go into the house. Okay. Okay. After you, sir. I was surprised to learn, Greg, that that this holds as many people as it is. What's your What's your capacity? Four hundred and sixty-five. Four hundred and sixty-five yes, people. That's pretty good size, seats. isn't it? Yes, it is. A big. And when you you and your dad bought this, what twenty years ago? About twenty years ago. Yeah. And have you had to do a lot of a lot of work on it? It looks to me like the seats, you know, they're in pretty good shape. Yeah, we just maintained them. We did renovate that whole side over over there, completely taking them apart. And oh, you did one yep. whole side. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh -huh. We got quite a few more to go, but yeah. But uh, I mean, they, they really do. It looks like it's in pretty good. Repair. Yeah, they're in great I shape. I asked you earlier about these these uh -huh. chandeliers and the light yep. fixtures, etc. And that's all that's all original stuff, huh? Yep, sure is. You know, it's really classy. It's that. Uh, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Uh, that art, oh, art, art, come art, deco. art Deco, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's really neat. And then also, I've been looking at the at the ceiling. They had an interesting scheme going here, which you carried over into the the proscenium, and, and mm -hmm. you've, you've painted that gold over the stage there, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, we completely redid that. It was blue, like like the color you see up on top there. Uh -huh. We thought it'd look a lot nicer like that, and draw more attention to the stage. Yeah. It looks so terrific. It looks did. terrific. Yeah. Well, part part of what we're, we're the reason we're here is we're talking about how you can repurpose something, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 you know not have to destroy things because right. it's so often that in, in in the smaller older towns things just get ripped ripped down. I right. mean because yep. they, somebody can't afford to keep them up. So we're going to see maybe one way to do that. Let's keep going. This is the River City uh, Country Opry that's setting up, and we'll be talking to some of these folks a little later on. We, we mentioned the, pr the projection room, and we can see uh, actually what they did here. When this was probably not built for films, you can see that they cut, they cut right, holes into, cut, the, cut the holes into the wall, huh? Made it work. 
he made it work. Lead us backstage if you want. Okay, it looks like you had to build, looks like you had to firm this up. Was this, was this falling in? Yeah, we're resurfacing this. We're making it, making it so it's a nice surface so uh -huh. we can do other things out here. I'd like to find somebody to do plays and, you know, mm -hmm. more, more events back here that require more yeah. space. When, when, it, when they were showing films here, and you can see what we're looking at is the back of the screen. That's and right. this comes all the way down. Yep. So, so that would have come down. And then mm -hmm. at that time, you didn't really need a backstage, did you? No. Now you do because you've got a big band out there. You've got a nine-member band, and of course, later this month you've got the Lincolnland Community College big band coming, and that's a big, big band. That's a big <laughs> band. Twenty members. Twenty members, and they'll be able to they'll be able to to, to fit on here. Yeah, right? actually, they say they're going to be able to sit in front of the screen. No kidding. Not even use this back. Yeah. But, but this is important to, to know that you have this yes. because it gives you a chance to have other venues as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm holding up uh, this, this movie, movie House Mayhem, and this is, a, this is one of the, there, there's a sound check going on. This is one of the events that you're gonna have later on this month. You've got uh, the Hooligans and Jake Durden and Rough Crossing, Melanie Cruz and Blake Steele coming in, and they're gonna raise hell here, aren't they? <laughs> 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 you expect to draw some folks for wrestling, huh? I hope so. I think what we're going to try to do with that is bring in the younger crowd. Because mm -hmm. we, we've got to figure it out here, I think, what, what they have is to bring in the, you know, the older folks. Now we, we have to figure out a way to bring in the younger folks. Yeah. So, so you and your dad have owned this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Six year, Was it six years ago you stopped showing movies? Is it that was six years ago we took over managing. Oh, you took over yeah. managing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And, and so the movies, in your, in your mind, the movies are gone, and mm -hmm. this is going to be an entertainment venue for now. I think on. This, is the, this is the way it's going to go for mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. Well, as we see them set up, you and I are going to find a way to get up to that uh, projection room. Okay. Uh, what's interesting about that, I think, is it gives us a good uh, insight into how, how movies used to be shown. And you know what? It's history now. Mm -hmm. It's history. People, people won't know, won't ever see that again. Uh, uh, the way these the way these old films were came in canisters and you put them together and uh, fed them through the old uh, projector. So let's head that way. Okay. Greg, have you had any input from the rest of the community about keeping the theater going? I think they're behind the the idea of it staying open. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll bet I they, they are. I, I I heard that the first about a year ago on on the first night that you had the River City mm -hmm. uh, Country Opera here that they were lined up for two blocks to get tickets. Well, they were all the way up and down Main Street. You couldn't find a place to park within four blocks. Is that right? Yeah. That's, that's right. terrific. Yeah. And is, is it that way every month? Pretty much, yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's mostly an older crowd, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But they love that. They love that it's country and doo-wop and sort of a blend of old rock music and country music. That's right, yeah. 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 And what's interesting, too, not, not only this theater is interesting because of its age, but I've never seen one where you have to go outside to go upstairs. That's the only one I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how that works. Right. <laughs> Got it. Well, Greg, the projectionist would have would have gotten his exercise, wouldn't he? These, these yeah, steep, yeah. steep steps. It's a long ways up. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, these old buildings, I'll tell you. Um, Got to make sure we bend over here. Okay. So, okay, this is where the projectionist would perform his magic. This is where And happens. you know what? I'll bet that was kind of a hard job because you, mm -hmm. you had to be right on time, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, the projectionist had to really have it together. Oh, yeah, definitely. In fact, it was a lot harder than what we see now. It used to be that to run a movie, you had two projectors. And so you'd go one reel on one, then you'd skip to one reel on the other, mm -hmm. and back and forth until the movie was finished. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we're getting a good look at what he would see if he's looking out at, uh, at, at the stage. Yep. And then right here, now this is this is sort of the the, the antique. And it's also the problem. This this projector here, you say, is from the 1930s, yes, right? Yes. Yep. And um, if they were still making them movies for this, mm -hmm. you probably could still be in the movie business. But they don't look like this anymore. They're not either. coming like that now. The uh, to replace to replace this cost more than fifty thousand yes. dollars. So. Yep. That, uh, that kind of tells you all you need to know. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, I guess, the lamp, huh? That's the lamp house, yeah. And that wouldn't be of any use these days either, would it? No, it's yeah. not. So what you have here is you, you've got yourself a couple of museum pieces, don't you? Yeah. 
That's all we have. It's, it's kind of fun to see them. <laughs> and I asked you, I had never seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. Explain to us how this would work. Well, this is called a platter. And you assemble the movie onto one of your platters. The, the movies come in real similar to this right here. And you get five, six, or seven of them. Okay. For, for each movie? For each movie. Okay. You assemble them onto one, you make one great big reel, and then you run it through your projector, then back onto another one of your platters. So that somehow you, you're able to wind it back through here, right. and then you yep. wind it back onto the yep. reel again, mm -hmm. huh? Yep. Uh, and then when you send it back, they expect, you expect to have the right movie on the right reel, yeah, et cetera, Yeah, you've got to have it in the right place. Okay, but the, mm -hmm. but the productionist also had to do this. He mm -hmm. would, yep. and, and this turned, I, yeah, this turns. Yep. okay. So... At the same rate as the projector takes it up. Mm-hmm. Runs through the projector and then mm -hmm. back over here. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you don't want to, you want to hold on to this stuff. Mm -hmm. This stuff should stay with the theater, don't mm -hmm. you think? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe somewhere in the theater. <laughs> Thanks for showing it to us. Yeah, no problem. It. Well, Stan, just about one year ago, uh, the River City Country Opry started coming here to the Lawford Theater in Havana. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of your idea, wasn't it? I mean, you said, you know what, that country opry closed at near New Salem, and maybe we ought to maybe we ought to try something, huh? Yeah, I just uh, it closed. I don't know, two or three years ago, and just thought, you know, maybe it would work, and yeah. just got an idea, and and uh, it has worked. Yeah. So. Well, you called Mr. McCarthy. Yep. He says, bring it on, right? Yep. <laughs> Well, we didn't have a place, and uh, so the main thing is get a good venue. So yeah. uh, everybody said, well, you know, that the old Lawford Theater is quite a place. And so I called Greg, and boy, he's been great. He yeah. worked with us, and he was actually looking for uh, someone to come in and keep it going. Yeah. So it worked out. Yeah, so you're here once a month. Uh, the second Thursday of each month, uh -huh. yep. uh, from 6.30 until 9. Yeah, he, he, said, he said that the first time that you guys came, came uh, there was there, there was nowhere to park on Main Street, and he said that both sides of Main Street were full of people waiting to get tickets. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny because uh, some of the older folks that come into the to the show, uh, they said that they come and they drove into Main Street and cars were lined up both sides of Main Street, and they said, you know. We haven't seen that many cars in Havana since 1959. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was... <laughs> That's true. And we had people actually yeah. lined up for a couple blocks the yeah. first show. Yeah. And we were excited. I mean, it, and it, there was around 360 people for the yeah. first show. So. Well, it, 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 he told us it seats 465, so yeah. you're nearly filling the place. It, well, uh, you know, the winter was a little tough. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we're getting some great crowds, you know, play great country music, a little bit of 50s and 60s. Uh, you know, uh, a classic country, and uh, the people enjoy right. it. Well, let's That's take it. a look at your at your list. I find this interesting because we always think musicians have it all in their head, but you guys have a playlist here, and this is yep. what your set is tonight, yes. right? Yep. Starting That's... with "Mind Your Own Business," "Bed of Roses," <clears throat> "Only Make Believe," "She Thinks I Still Care," and I recognize a lot of those. Yeah. Those are good old These tunes. These are good right old classic songs. Yeah. That's right, yeah. and that's what. And you know, the the folks they sit there and they hear them, and it brings them back. It takes mm -hmm. them back to, you know, so. Yep. Yep. And there's a lot of preparation for a show like this. Yeah. So we, but we enjoy it. Yeah. So we're not really in it for the money. We're just. We're, we're gonna we're gonna interview another couple of your musicians as well, and we're gonna get to hear you. You're gonna do your sound check, and we're right. gonna get to hear a little bit of the music that you play here. But for, but first, just give me give me a little a little lift that you might you might. Oh, be with this. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, little little bit of uh, classic country, a little bit of doo-wop, a little bit of doo-wop, fifties and sixties rock, uh, a little bit of blues, little blues. just a, cool. something for everybody. Yeah, cool. Thanks, yeah. Dan. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> People see us everywhere. They think you really care. Myself, I can't deceive.
Rhonda Brown, I noticed that there's like eight guys and one woman that's in this right. group. What's that like? <laughs> well, sometimes that's very, I don't know, I, I gotta be nice to them. No, it's fine. Yeah. They're, they're a great they're, group of they're guys. They're gentlemen? They are gentlemen. They treat sometimes. you good. It, it helps that your husband's in this group too, right? Well, yes. Yeah. And You're the vocalist. I am. Yes, what I am. does he play? My husband? Mm -hmm. No, he doesn't play any instrument. He doesn't? He just drives me around. Oh, is that? Okay. Well, I met him earlier, and I thought, well, he's a fellow musician, but he just likes to go where you go, yeah, huh? He just goes where I He go. likes the music. He goes where I tell him to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Terrific. Um, have you been singing country for a while? I've been, I started singing when I was 11 years old. Is that right? Exactly. I won't ask you how long that is. Just a few years just ago. Just a few years ago. <laughs> um, what do you like about country music? You know, I grew up listening to the classic country. My mom and dad played it all the time, and... Um, that's just where my heart is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like all kinds of music, but classic country is my favorite. It's, it's interesting that you all are here in Havana once a month at this old Lawford Theater. What's this venue like? Well, you know, I, I used to come to this place as a young child and watch movies here, yeah. so I never dreamed that I would be actually standing here singing on this stage. Mm -hmm. So it's great. I mean, the, the crowd that we have, the people, I mean, it's just so great to be standing up here singing and seeing the smiles on their faces out there. They really like it, don't they? they because do. there aren't many there aren't many groups that come yeah. through Havana. They usually they usually have to go somewhere else to get music. Exactly, don't they? and there's not a lot of country um, opera shows like this around mm -hmm. anymore. So yeah. it was. I was very happy when Stan called me and asked me if I'd like to join. Mm -hmm. So. It's been and wonderful. here you are. It's been it's been a year, and you're still in the band. Exactly. So that's they haven't kicked me out. Congratulations. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Jerry Carlock, I, I hear every country opera has to have a somebody with a sense of humor. They seem to have, yeah. Seem that, to have. Would that be you? Well, I hope so. <laughs> what do you do for the group? What you look like? Uh, you look like somebody that just kind of wandered in off the street. But what do you do? What do you do for the group? <laughs> I help them carry their stuff in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got a good strong back. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But I, I noticed you're a musician. Oh yeah, I can play a little bit. Can we see that guitar? I can play it. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's a toilet seat guitar. It is a toilet yeah. seat guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had it all your life? Well, I've used it most of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, earlier years of my life, we didn't have one of them. You know, we used the outside <laughs> one. But, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I've had it a while. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you like about being in the band. Well, uh, what I like about it is the camaraderie and uh, everybody seems to be getting along fine. They're good musicians, mm -hmm. very good music. And everybody gets along, and uh, we have a laugh for now and then, and that, that's what it's all about. Do you do you have a solo something that you you specialize in? Well, they let me do a lot of solo stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it is solo. You can't hear me, but uh, <laughs> but uh, we get by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. For I enjoy just being up here. I like music, and uh, I like to see people have fun. And uh, I like to have fun yeah. myself. Yeah. So, do you have a nickname in this group? Uh, yeah, it's, oh. it was on my guitar. Oh, it's Bird Dog. You're yeah. Bird Dog. Bird Dog. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, Bird Dog, thank you and good luck tonight. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. He said, "I'll love you till I die." She said, "You." As the years went slowly by, she still prayed upon his mind. Kept her picture. In addition to the River City Country Opry once a month, the Lincoln Land Community College Big Band will be here later in the month. The wrestling we talked about will be here and they'll be looking for other acts all throughout the summer. With another Illinois Story in Havana, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.